Christine, hold right there. I think it'd be really good to kind of assess exactly what the law actually currently says. With us joining this conversation now is lawyer and road safety activist Nick Freeman. Nick, thank you very much for, for joining us. What is, the, what is the current law if you're driving a bike rather than a car and you cause an accident? Um, well, that, that assumes, doesn't it? First of all, they know who caused the accident because um, th there's no means of identifying a cyclist or, or, or an e-bike rider um, because there's no number plate. So with cars, we have a, a proper system, a legal system of tracking them. With cyclists, they, they tend to cycle with impunity um, because if, if, if you don't know who they are, and they're not going to wait at the scene, you're never really going to find them. Um, so that's a huge problem. Um, the, the law is completely inadequate as far as cyclists are concerned. And, and to, to answer the question, why, why is the government not tackling this? I, I actually started a petition um, a while ago and just got over 10,000 votes. It's not a vote winner. It's not popular. The cyclists are very vociferous. Um, when Boris was in government, um, his, he had a cycling czar who was very keen, and one can understand that the Jeep, the green credentials, but one also has to look at, we're sharing road space now. Um, there are more and more cyclists on the road, which is welcome, but we need laws to tackle them. And uh, the reality is, for example, there's no speed limits for cyclists. Yep. There isn't actually a drink drive limit. There's no drug limit. There is an offense of driving whilst unfit through drink and drugs, but there's no actual limit. So we have this perverse situation now uh, in many cities where cyclists are overtaking cars, and cars would be speeding if they went over 20 miles an hour, but cyclists aren't. Which so let is me bring wrong. you. Let me let me ask you this for Christine. And, and and as I say, we did this. I don't remember the gentleman's name. He lost his wife for goodness sake. He'd been just trying desperately to speak to government and and, and get some answers. Explain to me from a, from a legal point of view, Nick. Um, why is it I can be sat at a traffic light, I've got to adhere to the speed limit, I've got to adhere to, to the red lights, all of that, because I'll go to jail. A cyclist can move from my right across the front of me, straight through the red light, up on the pavement and go. How in the name of the law, without getting angry out of respect for Christine, how the hell yeah. has that not changed? It's a disgrace, man. It, it's, there are tens of thousands of cyclists committing offences every day. So why aren't they all, stopped? All, all, why aren't they stopped? Who, who, who is it? Unless you have a system, I have said to the government, we share road space with e-scooters, yeah. with e-bikes, with cyclists. We need to share the law. It needs to be precisely the same law for everyone that would ensure our roads are much safer. Uh, um, as Christine said, you know, if you're a car driver and God forbid you kill someone, you're now looking at life imprisonment under recent legislation. If you're a cyclist and you kill someone, the, the maximum penalty, as you've heard, is two years under the Offences Against the Persons Act, 1861, for wanton and furious cycling. H how much more does one need to hear for a government who says they're responsible, they're in concern with road safety, to actually grasp this nettle, get people involved who obviously have a huge, um, huge input into how to make our roads safer and do the right thing? But it, it's not a vote winner. And... Um, I think they just see it as it's too complicated. The cyclists don't want it, um, and they, they think they can ignore cyclists it. But eventually, don't want to. they're going to have to tackle it. Can you explain, Nick? What are what are some of the hurdles to be able to enact this? Is it that cyclists would need to have licences? What are the what are the yeah. kind of more difficult they things think, to get over? Well, the starting point for me is an identification plate, a registration plate on the back of a cycle and on an, an wow. e bike. Excuse me, that's my dog in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, Let you me ask while your some... dog barks. Let me just bring Christine well, back in. You you quiet the dog up, it's like that manager. viral thing. Christine, he's, he's, nobody he's se nobody seems to disagree with this archaic situation. And you lost your father. It was actually Matthew Briggs who was on our show, just been given the information, well, whose whose well, wife Kim was killed by a cyclist that had no front brakes. This 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 killer got ten months. What? I mean, well, interestingly, he's... Nick... Hold on a sec, Nick, I'm speaking to Christine, sorry. Nick says it's not a vote winner, but that does nothing for people like you whose lives have been ripped to shreds. I mean, even the police are frustrated by this, to be honest with you. When this first happened to Dad, um, I was told that he'd probably be charged with manslaughter to the rider if Dad died or... Yeah. Um... That's not now the case. We're talking furious and wanton driving, which I find absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, a lot of people blame the police for this, but it's it's not. They can only prosecute to the powers of. And actually, 
my partner had written to Helen Grant MP for Maidstone and she got a reply yesterday from Guy Opperman, the Minister for Roads and Local Transport, if I can just read a sentence here. Dangerous cycling is completely unacceptable and road safety continues to be a high priority for the department. That is why there are strict laws in place and the police have the power to prosecute if these are broken. For example, cycling on the pavement and footpaths is an offence under Section 72 of the Highways Act 1835, other than in a designated area such as bridleways and shared, shared use routes. I mean, we, you know, it's 2024 now. Do something about this. The government wants everyone to be green, wants them to cycle, but they're not prepared to bring the laws up to date to make sure that it's safe. I mean, as a pedestrian, I don't feel safe on the pavement anymore. Mm. I walk out of my parents' house because I now have to live with mum permanently. I'm now her carer because that's what di dying did to her. And I have to look up and down the pavement to make sure that I don't get taken out. I was almost taken out by an e-scooter yesterday on Maidstone. It's just ridiculous. I don't get it. Neither do I. Christine, thank you so much yeah. for talking so candidly about what's happened to your family. And Nick, for just providing the wider context that's been invaluable. Thank you both so much. Thank you, gang. It, it is, it is extraordinary so to think, isn't it, that people can be killed by a site. And of course, she made a really salient point. This is the green lot. This is everybody saying, oh, well, and I lay this at Boris's door. Yes, get on your bicycles. But the truth is, without going over the top here, you use the same roads, the laws are archaic and people are being killed. The laws are being broken, but police turn a blind eye to a red light, a car in a red light. Nick Freeman has got this absolutely right. Cyclists should have registration numbers on them instead of those little cameras they do to have a go at motorists yeah, all the time. I'm not sure the